Hey guys, welcome back to another Alistair C123 uh, welding video. And uh, just starting out with a little uh, explanation of what I've been up to. Um, we've done a bit of concreting at home, so I had to rock hammer out a lot of uh, ground rock and put in uh, some concrete into our lovely lane leading to our house. So that's one thing keeping me occupied. Um, Whenever we got that done, uh, work's been ongoing in the background as well. I've bossed a lot of differentials on my little off-road 4x4 Jeep, Suzuki Jimny. And I've also broken differential on my farm quad, my utility quad as well. Not to mention numerous drive shafts and CV shafts, so I've been flat out busy fixing them. Meantime, the workshop's been flat out with uh, lots of rock crushers out of the quarry. Here we've got a big old Pegson 1300 upper frame getting uh, reconditioned, brought back to new. We've had cone, cone heads in getting built up as well. And even had a nasty thermal lancing job as well, lancing out a lot of stuck pins. So stay tuned to uh, hopefully get some coverage of these jobs in upcoming videos. Uh, this was Jaw Crusher, got a new uh, top plate as well. Um, absolutely endless amount of work that I can only video about 1% of. Um, I wish I could bring it all to you guys, but anyway, today's one's a good one. We've got a toggle block out of a crusher uh, with a, the corner broken off it. As you can see, this is a huge lump of cast steel, and unfortunately, with wear and tear. Um, it has become misaligned and twisted and eventually broke this corner off. Very tricky fix because the crack runs at a very shallow angle um, from full thickness right up to uh, a thin wedge. So I have to figure out what's the best way to gouge it. So the first thing I'm going to do is gouge the remaining piece of metal that is actually holding the broken piece on. This is only a few percent. It is broken like 98-99% of the way through and there's only a little tiny piece holding it together. So we'll remove that little piece of uh, metal along the join of the crack and this will let it fall onto the floor in two separate pieces completely revealing the broken faces whenever I see the broken faces this allows me to examine is it a stretch crack a fatigue crack um, an overload crack uh, in this case I know what it comes from it's from a crusher and it's um, subject to many 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 millions of cycles of load uh, so in this case it's a, a fatigue crack um, combined with overload um, so you can see all the little fissures and fractures and stretch, stretch marks these this is all considered fatigued metal and will have to be removed uh, it will also have to be removed in order to actually give me access to do a full, full penetration weld. So we draw a chalk line down the center line of the join. This gives a total full penetration V weld. Uh, I've prepped it with, with the ordinary oxyacetylene burners as this is cast steel, it cuts the same. Here's the other half, so we'll have to gouge off all the flaws and cracks and stretch marks on this half. So that's them all removed with the gouger. So now we're ready for a test fit. The whole point of leaving the peak in the middle is to retain the original dimensions. So the chalk line down the middle is the original height of the material so this keeps us within the original size and fit up and obviously the v prep then provides access 
for a full depth weld from both sides. Sometimes it's not possible to have an even weld from both sides, but we try as best as possible. An even weld on both sides distributes the stress evenly, but in examples like this where it's a very awkward shape, you can only do your best and if there's more weld on one side, you try and manage stresses with preheats and sometimes stress relieving post welding. So that's it all fitted up and aligned with a straight edge, time to get some welding. So we've got a little tack just to do a first check and you can see the fit up's pretty good considering the shape of it. With a little gap and um, whenever you can see just a small amount of daylight that's good. Uh, we can get a good weld almost full penetration. Uh, whenever we do the first run from one side then we will back gouge it and weld it from the other side. So we'll grind off some of the burning slag, get the preheat into it, and pull that trigger. Managed to pick up this three-headed heating torch, and uh, I'm loving it. It uses propane only, and it's a gentler, more gradual heat. Uh, I can turn it down, leave it over morning tea break, come back, and the job's ready to weld. So, as I said, this is just a brief overview of the entire job from start to finish. Um, a lot of jobs I would be spread across a couple of different jobs and it's just not feasible to video them all from start to finish. Um, but yeah, so now after prepping it, gouging it, tacking it together with a straight edge, um, as I said, we preheated the job to about 150 degrees and then we start welding and we'll also keep an eye on the temperatures to make sure it doesn't get too high as well and um, if the temperature gets up to 400 degrees that's too hot and the characteristics of the metal start to change so we have to stop welding um, well before that and let it cool down a bit so uh, we have a good few hours welding this and when it's finished welding then there's a few of the machine faces have to be built up uh, whenever they're built up with weld that means the milling machine can mill all of the faces back to the original size that they used to be before it twisted and bent and got worn and also any align misalignment from welding so here you can see part way through welding we have a good base in the base runs root runs uh, in that large v v prep really tricky shape you know non-uniform widths and um, varying angles and different uh, different angles for uh, access so nice tricky job just the way I like them but uh, making it work is what we're all about uh, a lot of these parts they're not available uh, the manufacturer doesn't make them anymore or if they are available they can have a ludicrous uh, order time lead time you know, some of these parts could be six months or a year before they can be manufactured and shipped out, so that's that's when our business comes into play. We can repair or make new ones ourselves. So, anyway guys, hope you enjoyed that short video. Uh, we'll have a little bit of milling at the end here, um, with our giant milling machine which came out of Harlan Wolf Engineering Works, where the Titanic was built. 
I hope to do a video on a bit of the history of that. Uh, I also got a new welding mask recently and I plan to do a review of that also. I have an hour long special coming up soon of a repair to an actual full size real life monster truck axle. One of the more unusual things that I've fixed in my welding career. Um, that also was accompanied by a great day out to watch it in action so be sure and stay tuned for that one uh, the video has been put together by a friend and uh, it will be an entirely new viewing uh, experience for all of my subscribers so be sure to stay tuned for that if you did enjoy the video guys as usual i'd appreciate the thumbs up keep the algorithm going and uh, Drop me a comment down below, tell me what you're working at and what's going on in your life. Always love to hear from you guys. So once again, thanks for tuning in and uh, I'll catch you on the next one. Stay safe guys, over and out.